We're back. For this one, just a few other important pointers before going forward. So what I'm going to go through in this video, I'm going to talk about pips, a few aspects of terminology that we need to be aware of. And also, I'm going to go through a trade example just to ensure that we are all on the same page going forward. Now, many people often think to be good at world markets, to make money through world markets, you have to be, you know, crazy with numbers. We watch films like Limitless, etc., where we see multiple screen setups, digits flying left, right, and center, crazy chart graphs, and it all just looks like some kind of Einstein shit. Now, I'm just going to break it down. Aspects of maths are calculating from pip to pip, quote to quote. I'm going to pull up a chart in a moment. I'm going to relate it to what we see in front of us right there. And we also obviously want to work out our money management risk reward, which is covered in this course. So don't worry. Um, aside from that, most of it is, is recognition of patterns and repeating yourself over and over and over until excellence is actually achieved. So let's get started. Pips. I'm on page 23 in the Asher Effects book. Now, PIP stands for percentage in points. There's a few examples in here. These were sourced from NetDania, which is an online trading platform. And as you can see, we have bid and ask. Bid and ask is important, so I'll get into that in a moment, but we can also see that the quotes actually go to five decimal places. So we have 1.37003. 1.37004. Now, don't get me wrong. It must have took me around four to six weeks to get my head around pips, how to calculate pips, because when I was learning from online resources, I was mixing it up all over the place, and it was extremely difficult to get my head around, especially when I was trying to compare some of the major quotes to some of the yen quotes, because they are slightly different. I'll go through that as well. And also, why do some brokers give you four decimals? Why do some brokers give you five decimal places? Now, here, firstly, the pip difference from the price, 1.3700, and I've put in brackets the fifth one here, three, to 1.3701, in brackets two, is indeed an increase of 0.9 pips. Now, the fifth decimal place we can in fact just turn a blind eye to it. It is known as a pipette, okay? The pipette is more or less a point of the actual pip. The fourth decimal place is the pip. Let me just get my whiteboard up again. All right, so we have, um, what's that quote? 1.3700, I'll just, I'll, I'll just pull up any random one. So 1.3710. All right, two, one point three, seven, zero, eight. All right, guys, the fourth decimal place. This is the pip. The fourth decimal place. One, two, three, four. With that being said. If you're a USD drop from 1.3710 to 1.3708, guess what? It's decreased two pips. Now, the fifth decimal place, yes, it can come in. So let me change color and let me get black. So on some brokers, you may see 1.37101. And over here it might be 082. Just remember that is a point of the pip. This is a pipette, known as a pipette. The fifth decimal place is a pipette. However, to aid confusion, we can turn a blind eye to that. It's cool. We don't need to be that precise in the market. All right. The second decimal place is a point. Point. A point equals 100 pips, guys. Simple as that. So let's say your USD went from 
1.3710 to 1.3608. Guess what? Just over a point, 102 pips. So one point decrease. Let's say it did that in a day. That's that. Point, pip, pipette. Let me take you over to the charts. Now, da, 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 over here, I can just squeeze this in. We have GBP USD in front of us. So let's get the daily time frame up. Let me just see what's going on. All right, daily time frame GBP USD. All right, so this candle here represents one day of price action. We've opened here. Early hours of the morning, we spiked up and we spiked up to 1.3027. And you can see here on this axis, this is where I'm focusing. So when I put the crosshair there, 1.3027. And you can see the seven next to it. Let me just go 1.27. There we go. 1.30277. Again, guys, just ignore the fifth decimal, the seven. People get really, really confused with working out the pit values and so forth because, yes, TradingView does cater for a fifth point. We can just ignore it. So the high of the day is 1.3027. The low of the day is 1.2935. Let's simplify this. So 1.3027, the low of the day, what did I say it was? 1.2934. Again, focus is on the fourth decimal. Ignore the fifth decimal on trading view. It's okay. For those people who struggle, simply start with getting a calculator. So if we've gone from 1.3027 down to 1.2934, we just take it away. We just take it away. Take away 1.2934. There we go. Simple as that. 93 pips. So GBP today has gone from the high of the day, it's made a low at the bottom. So from top to bottom, it's done 93 pips. But if we look at the chart, we can see that we've pulled back up uh, from the lows of the day. So 35s, we're currently at 72. So we've, we're, we are up around 35, 37 pips from the low of the day so far. Cool. So that's how we can work it out. So from the top to bottom, GBP USD is falling 93 pips. Now that's 93 pips on a smaller time frame. It'll become a lot uh, clearer as to, I'll just show you. So if we go down to the hourly, if we look at the hourly time frame, we can see we started up here. And uh, this must have been the Asian session or fell in the London session. And then we've just kind of consolidating and gone sideways because uh, we're still in the US session at the moment. So that's that. Now, um, aside from that, all I want to just show you is the yen, okay? So because we will be trading some yen pairs, I will be uploading some yen pairs in future videos. So here we go. Now, the yen works slightly different. I'm going to focus on euro yen. So let's just get the current price of the euro yen at the moment. So here we are, 113.06. So 113.06, however... There's a four next to it, zero, six, four. Now, yen pairs are slightly different. All yen pairs are like this because the, the value of the yen is so large, so long, um, the compressed currency exchange tells us um, that, you know, there's so many yens to a pound or a dollar, it has to be converted with uh, not just one, but maybe two or three points before the decimal. So here, one, two, three. Now, just like the, the fifth decimal on, let's say, Euro USD or the pound, all right, 
The third decimal is the pipette. The one we want to be focusing on on any of the yen pairs is the second. That is the pip. This one is the pipette, which we can just erase from our minds. And that's our primary focus. So let's have a look at the yen. So let's say the lower, lower today was 112.70. So we can do 112.70. We can do this one in our heads. So 70 to 0 06, 12 to 13, taking one away from the other. <clears throat> from the lows to the highs, guess what? 36 pips from the low to the high today. So with the with the end pairs, we can ignore the third decimal. On the other pairs, we can ignore the fifth decimal. I just wanted to clear that up with everybody. Now I'm going to stress this, stress this later on in, in our other videos, but we only really want to focus on a handful of pairs going forward, especially if you're just starting out. That is not to say Astro FX recommend we trade two or three pairs, no. I'm talking when we want to start out, we, we need to get used to the currencies. We need to get used to all of the levels, the figures, the exchange rates. So I know off the top of my head, all of the key levels I have on the yen, on Euro yen over here. Um, like this setup, this is one of the live setups. I'm actually in this trade and at the end of the video uh, course, you will actually see uh, live trades, befores and afters. This is one that's currently in motion. But I entered short around one, and you can't really see that, but here I entered at one, let's say 113. My target is 112. So 113 to 112, I'm looking for 100 pips. My stop loss is above the highs, 30 pips at 113.60. So from 113 short up to 113.60 stop loss, I'm, I'm risking 60 pips here, and I'm going for 100 pips. So the risk reward is a 1 to 1.5. Now, as I say, um, all of the currencies, you can see here the, the, um, the change percentage of the day. You can see the last, I think you can customize this. Can you customize this? Maybe somehow you can customize this. Um, but you can see the uh, current price on there and so forth. So you can see here, you'll you see 1.1166 and then the little two there. That's the fifth decimal we can ignore. So we've just gone from 6.6 six to 6.5. 6.5, 6.5, 6.5, 6.6. It's just fluctuating one pip at a time. Now, if I just remove this out of the way, that's that with the quotes. So yen pairs are slightly different, guys. Just remember that. It might take you a while to learn. Depends how much experience you have. Everybody's different with numbers. Don't get me wrong. But it just helps. This is why journaling, saving the work, annotating your work is important because you start to program your mind with all of these new figures. So that's one aspect of maths there. Pull back the book. Okay, so all of this is in the book as well. Feel free to rip it up, put it on your wall, do what you need to do. Um, the other point I want to express here is that on trading view, okay, and when we're using professional, not just trading, trading view, but um, a charting platform, we only see one running quote. There's only one running quote to any currency pair. Now, the reason uh, I've got this off MetaTrader, I pulled, pulled this from MetaTrader quote board and every single broker you use, you are going to see two quotes, two quotes for your currencies. One's called the bid. One's called the ask. So USD Swiss franc. Let's do this one together. So the bid is 8879. Again, I'm just going to 8879. And what is that? That's 0 0.8879. 0 0.8879. And the ask is 0 0.8881. Whoops, sorry, my bad. 8881. All right, anyway, guys, it's in the book, right? The fifth decimal here, I've ignored again. I've just explained why. So we want to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So if you go from seven, nine to eight, one, simple maths, guess what? It is a difference of two pips. Mm -hmm. Two pips. 
Right, the bid. Excuse my phone. Should turn this off, sorry. Now the bid price and ask price, as I say, any broker you're gonna see this. I'm gonna show you later on. Um, on my, uh, I have to go onto my other computer for it, but I'm gonna pull up MetaTrade, I'm gonna show you this on live market. You get the bid and ask. Right, the asking price is, just think of it as another word for buy. So when you click buy, the market is going to put you in at this price. Bid is sell. If you click sell and you want to short that pair, it's going to put you in at this price. The difference between the bid and ask equals the spread. Okay, the spread. Now, what I will say about the spread, all of this is in the book as well for you to refer back to. So here we go, spread. It's got the bid, the ask, spread, and you can see the different examples. So GBP USD, 1.6615, 1.6618. That's a free pip spread. Spreads are the broker's commission to enter a trade. So if you click buy or sell, let's say you did 10 pounds a pip and the spread is two pips, guess what? You're gonna be down 20 pounds or dollars, regardless. And you're gonna see that on your platform um, before you take profit, before you close the trade. Regardless, this spread the difference between the bid and ask is in fact the broker's piece. They're going to take from the market. So, you know, if you did 20 pound a pip, you're going to be down 40, et cetera, et cetera. So you can imagine how much money brokers make from spreads. And the, the more trades you do every single day or every single week, the more you are paying the broker. One word of advice here. Another reason why we don't trade uh, directly on fundamentals and high volatility news events is because when let's say non-farm payroll comes out or we've got some interest rates or any other high uh, volatile news event comes out there and then this spread can go from two pips i've even seen it go up to eight pips now you can imagine how many people are trying to trade news and the broker it's like a circus day for the brokers the brokers are going to entice you into trading the news because they can widen the bid and ask without you knowing so you place £10 a pip on this trade because you think you're going to get one up on the news move. And your £20 commission has now gone to £80 commission. All right. So you can imagine how much money the brokers are making through direct news events. So again, guys, I'm going to tell you this once more before we do get into it in a, on a deeper level. Do not trade the news. Give it half an hour. Give it an hour after. Okay. Just leave that to the idiots who want to waste their money. So bid and ask. There's a lot more going on behind the scenes here, but this is just a word of advice. Do not get caught up in the spread widening. And the broker will just blame it on something called slippage as well, which you can go and research for yourself. So all brokers are slightly competitive with each other. They're going to offer you different spread rates, different commission rates, but that is how you work it out, people. So... If you ever want to go into, by the way, all of the major currency pairs are the ones that are going to be the smallest spread, the the, the, the cheaper to trade. Euro USD is generally 1 to 1.5 pips, cheapest to trade because the liquidity is, is slightly high on there. That's why a lot of interest and a lot of scalpers are drawn to the Euro USD due to its low commission, low spread costs. Now, all of this is in the book once more. But that's just a word of advice. Don't trade the news, spread widens. And if you are going into exotic currency pairs and new currency pairs, always check with your broker the difference between the bid and ask. If you're executing through MetaTrader, by all means, I'm going to show you this later on. I'm going to get my phone out. I'm going to uh, put the camera to it. And it actually shows you on your watch list the spread. I'll show you how to, uh, how to be wary and vigilant of that as well before you actually go in and place trades on... A currency pair which has a spread of 8 pips, 16 pips, 30 pips. And believe me, I've done it back in the day when I didn't really know any better. So what you've just learned in this one video is something that actually took me, I don't know, six weeks to learn the, the pips, the pip count, pip hat point, the difference between the standard currency quotes and the yen quotes, and the bid and ask thing I learned more or less from trial and error, and finding out the hard way by wasting a lot of money, trying to trade the news, trying to trade pairs with huge spreads for no reason, and so on. So that's that. I hope you gained something of interest from this video. Right, on to the next.